YouTube, it's Faye. And for today's video, I'm gonna discuss a topic that um, I kind of feel like has been talked to death on the forums and was just like settled in the early 2000s, but I'd recently found um, a lot of requests in my inbox for people wanting me to do a tutorial on this. Um, and I kept on trying to send people to uh, the Supermania website to give them, you know, better idea of everyone else's perspective aside from mine. And I realized that Supermania was down. So um, that's, that's a bummer. For those of you that are into Supras and have been on the forums for a long time, you know, there's the two main ones, the Supra forums, which is more like Mark IV oriented, and then Supra Mania, which has like a ton of awesome technical articles and technical threads that's sort of more geared towards the Mark III. Um, but for some reason, that website is no longer. So hopefully it comes back because um, I definitely relied on it a ton for a lot of my information and seeing other people's build threads and what they were up to. But anyway, um, so for today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to shim your 7M oil pump, um, why people do it, why I chose to do it, um, and what I do now, which I think is a better alternative. So let's get right into it. Tools that you're gonna need to do this job a 22 millimeter wrench. Um, and along with that, if you have a torque wrench that has an open 22 millimeter attachment, uh, I'll link this in the description below. If you don't have one, this is awesome. Um, this is not a tool, but I guess kind of in this application, um, a collection of M6 washers. Uh, not super necessary, but I, I like it as an electric engraver or an engraver of any type. Obviously the pocket screwdriver because the magnetic part is pretty much essential, and um, a way of measuring our washer thickness. Also, a really nice bench vise is super handy, and also I did not show using one, but if you have a C-clamp, like a four inch, uh, I think is ideal, maybe five inch C-clamp, um, that would also be super helpful, but not necessary. Also, some engine assembly grease, and parts that I use in this video is a brand new factory Eisen oil pump and an upgraded spring from Drift Motion. All right, so first of all, let's just discuss the how. Um, I highly recommend getting a new oil pump with any engine overhaul or engine rebuild. Um, this one I got on World Pack, it was like $110. This is cheap insurance, um, because especially if you've had an issue like rod knock um, or any oil pressure issues, I mean, this is like, the heart of your oiling system, right? And uh, this one, I did get on World Pack, but it is the factory. It is the um, Eisen. Let's see if you can actually see that. Yeah, you can, it'll focus. Um, but what's interesting, there you can see it's, it's there too. What's interesting though is because this was part of um, a kit, you can actually get this as part of like a full like engine overhaul kit, um, also like on World Pack. Every time I buy like OEM parts on World Pack, they tend to like remove the Toyota. <laughs> and the part numbers, which I think is really interesting. Uh, but this is an OEM pump. So, um, all right. What we're gonna be shimming here is the pressure relief valve or like the pressure relief spring, which is right here. So we're gonna start by undoing. If you can see from um, behind, um, we're gonna be shimming right behind here. So we're gonna remove this piece. All right, so we are going to start by clamping the oil pump in a vise. Um, just be careful, obviously I'm using some protection and uh, you don't wanna clamp it too tight. You don't wanna warp it or damage it or anything like that. Um, then my annoying neighbor's dogs are gonna start barking at literally nothing, probably me. Um, I'm gonna grab my 22 millimeter wrench next and I'm just gonna loosen this bolt. It may feel a little difficult to unthread, and that is because there is, well, <laughs> spring tension behind it. So here is the relief spring, and you can see that there like really is no difference in how the spring is. Both sides are flat, so there's no like right or wrong way to insert the spring. All right, so now you've got our bolt with the hole in it. <laughs> and our spring, and now we're gonna shim it. So I like to choose these little washers. First of all, I always buy them in stainless steel. Ugh, they're always gonna be in oil, so if you don't, it's not a big deal. But I just want something that's not gonna like rust or corrode over time, because the last thing I want is debris in the pump, you know? So I've got these nice little stainless steel washers, and the reason why I chose this particular size is because, first of all, they're fairly thick, so I can take these down to the grinding wheel and take quite a bit of material off of them to achieve exactly the amount of a thickness or you know shim thickness that I want. But also check this out. The way that this fits in here is absolutely perfect. You can see that the outside diameter 
is perfect with the inside diameter of the plug. And then also look, the holes are identical, or actually the washer hole is a little bit larger. So I'm not interfering with any of the way that it's supposed to work factory, um, except I'm totally modifying how it's supposed to work factory. So now how many of these shims you wanna use or how much you wanna shim your oil pump, it's completely up to you. Uh, I don't feel comfortable giving anyone a recommendation on that because there is so much that goes into how much oil pressure you have in a 7M. It is such a crazy issue uh, and there is so much that I could potentially go into about the oiling system. I will touch more on this with um, the 7M build that I'm doing on my 89 because that's going to get a little a little crazy but for the 88 I'm pretty much doing like an OEM plus build so I think here that what I'm doing is going to be enough. Um, that being said, the first time I ever shimmed my oil pump was back in 2015. I did notice a difference in my baseline oil pressure. If you get onto the forums, you're gonna find so many people saying it's a worthless modification. That's fine. Uh, I never thought that it was, especially because um, Aaron of Drift Motion, who's like one of the kings of 7Ms, always shimmed all of his oil pumps. I'm actually gonna get in, into that in just a second um, and, and swore by it. The reason why I'm, I'm not gonna like make any sort of claims to is because at the time when I shimmed my oil pump, I was, I had a really old worn out engine, 200,000 miles on it, and I was running 2050 oil. <laughs> Which I, I would never do now. I'm gonna run a, a thinner oil than that. But uh, at the time, you know, it was uh, it was it was good. <laughs> at the time, my engine needed it. Uh, but I'm gonna thin out the oil a little bit. So the thicker oil definitely contributed to my higher baseline oil pressure. So um, I'm going to actually. So what I what I did with mine is I shimmed the pump five millimeters, and I did notice a drastic difference in my oil pressure. So I'm just gonna measure out these. Uh, let's see, the thickness of one of these is, all right, 1.4, so one and a half. So I'm probably gonna use four of these and then have to shave one down maybe. Let's put four of these together. So four of these guys together is 5.56. So what I would actually do from here is take the thickest one, because they're not, I mean, they're not all the same, they're not all perfect. And I will take this down to the grinder and I will grind down this thickest one. Now, do I think this is the best way to upgrade your oil pump? Um, actually, no. Uh, since doing this, there's actually a much better option offered by Drift Motion. They're not a sponsor, Drift Motion is just freaking amazing. And that is an upgraded spring that's stiffer. And this is actually pretty cheap on their website. I think it's like 11 or $12. So I would definitely recommend doing this, which is already calibrated like by the master. Um, instead of the shims. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and install this. Now, what's really interesting is that when you look at these side by side, here's the stock one, and here is Aaron's that's that's upgraded. They are almost the exact same height. Actually, they are the same height. Uh, this one, okay, the Drift Motion one is slightly taller, maybe by like half a millimeter. Um, but when you go to compress them, you can, I can definitely feel that this one, the stock spring is much weaker than Aaron's upgrade. So I'm gonna be installing this upgraded spring uh, on the 88's oil pump. So I'm gonna do this uh, and forego the shims. However, I mean, these were pennies. This was $11. Depends on if you need to do it ASAP or if you feel like waiting for shipping for this to come. I would recommend just upgrading the spring. Um, so I'm gonna install this. Also, while you're here and you have the oil pump out, there is another major upgrade that I think will also help with just like oil flow, not necessarily like pressure, but flow since we're working on the pump right now. And that is this. This oil line is also available on the Drift Motion website. Arizona Performance also makes one that's a hard line that's not braided. Um, but the factory oil line that you will find uh, at the bottom of the 7M is, um, it's extremely restrictive and it has like a very harsh, like 90 degree like banjo fitting and it's a little bit restrictive. So while you're in there, I, I highly recommend getting one of these. So, so this combination, I think is gonna be a perfect fit for a nice like OEM plus build. All right, so that being said, let's, um, let's get this spring installed. All right, so back at the pump and I'm actually just gonna go ahead and take my little pinky finger and remove the plunger, the inner plunger, come here. All right, maybe this is a little excessive, but I always like to go ahead and put a bunch of assembly grease, I mean, not, not a bunch, obviously, like a light coating of engine assembly grease onto this before installation. Uh, and actually, according to the factory service manual, 
If you're checking out an old oil pump, you actually coat this in oil and make sure that it falls into the cylinder under its own weight, like just, just its own density, just like dropping down into the cylinder without any resistance. And that's how you know that it's, it's good. You don't want it to slam too fast. You want it to have a little bit of resistance and drop right in slowly. Um, so, but yeah, like I said earlier, I do not condone reusing an oil pump. It's like just barely over a hundred dollars. Um, so now that this is coated in engine assembly grease, can I go ahead and put it in there? Just make sure that it slides in there really nice. You can't see. Just make sure that it slides in there really nice, which it does. And I'm just going to give a little bit of pressure the entire time that I tighten this because I do not want, now that spring has to obviously sit in the middle of that plunger, but I don't want to mess up the threads. So I'm going to be pushing in while I turn just to make sure that I get it started and I'm not messing up the threads because whether you're shimming or using the upgraded spring, um, either way, this is gonna, you're gonna have to force this in there, so. All right, and then we're gonna torque this to 27 foot-pounds. There it is. Okay, so now that we have our spring or our shims installed, um, our oil pump is almost complete. There's one more step that I think is really, really important to do. Um, maybe if you have a bunch of engines that you're building or if you're gonna be setting this down for a while, how are you gonna tell from the outside what has been done to it? Um, or maybe you've just got a ton of 7Ms around. I, I don't know. Um, what I did on my last one that I shimmed at five millimeters was I took my engraver and engraved on the nut five millimeters. So I, I knew that when I took it out, I mean, I, I might forget. I like to keep really good records, but sometimes, sometimes you just forget. So in this case, I'm gonna engrave 30% spring on it uh, because according to the Drift Motion website, this spring should give about a 30% oil pressure increase uh, above stock. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that just so I can easily identify it from the outside. All right. So this concludes my video on how to shim your 7M oil pump or how to increase the relief pressure using an upgraded spring. Um, so let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm actually thinking of since Supramania is down, maybe hitting like a whole bunch of the typical 7M issues uh, that I never really felt like covering in the past because I feel like they were covered so well in the forums, but since it's gone, we need to, we need to archive that information somewhere. Uh, also, just a reminder that, like I mentioned earlier in this video, that is not all that I recommend that you do to make your oil system like beefier or I don't know, just more fail safe. Um, however, that's just all that I wanted to cover in this video, and I'll definitely be covering more of the oiling system in future videos, so stay tuned. Uh, last but not least, if you think that this is a worthless modification, uh, don't bother commenting, because I don't care. <laughs> um, uh, I, I have seen results for myself. Um, also, like I said, this is straight from the Drift Motion website, and Aaron has been working on 7Ms for a lot longer than I have. Um, he's a personal friend of mine, and um, he's never led me astray ever on any 7M advice. It's always been great advice. So um, he's got a good track record. So I, I, I'm sold on this modification. You might not be, and that is totally okay. You don't have to do it. Uh, so I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.